Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to do a full brand review for the skincare company Naturium. This is per some viewers request, so if you want me to do this for any other skincare brand out there, please leave in the comment section below what your suggestions or requests are. So this brand is available through its own website, but also through Amazon, and the skincare products seem to be fairly reasonably priced. So I'm very interested to look into the brand. It is going to be an ingredients review for every single product. So this is not a review based on me having used these skincare products yet. It is going to be a discovery and look into the ingredients so that you can know before you even purchase anything and try it out on your own skin, whether maybe it's a good idea or maybe a bad idea to buy one of these products. Thank you so much for being a subscriber. If you aren't already, please go ahead and hit that red subscribe button and that notification bell if you want to make sure not to miss any of these kinds of videos. You can also go ahead and follow Allura Beauty on Instagram. If you're a subscriber or a follower on Instagram, you will be eligible for upcoming giveaways. So I'll link that handle in the upper left-hand corner for you. I will also link every single one of the products I talk about in this video in the description box below. I will link to where you can find it and potentially purchase it if you may be interested in it. And also a link to Rakuten, which is a cash back program. So that if you're spending money online, whether that's Sephora, Ulta, Amazon, almost any website that you are purchasing from, you can get cash back on whatever purchases you're making. And last thing is, please go ahead and check out my latest video if you have not already seen it. I will link it in the upper right hand corner. I appreciate it so much. All right, let's dive into this brand called Naturium and see what there is to see. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to go to their website and just see what they claim about their own brand. It says that these products are plant sourced, science developed, and skin activated. Not sure what that means, but if you scroll down, you'll see that it says that they're driven by their belief in high performance skincare and that it should be clinically effective, skin compatible, and affordable. They use cutting edge technology and the healing powers of ingredients found in nature. The result is advanced skincare that lives up to its full potential and potential through clean, thoughtful formulas. We all know hopefully by now that the term clean beauty or clean skincare doesn't really mean anything. And it definitely doesn't mean that the ingredients are better than other ingredients um, or superior in any sort of way. Interestingly, they have their own definition of what clean beauty means to them. So they say that it means natural, again, doesn't mean that it's good for your skin or better than a quote unquote non-natural ingredient, clean, Okay, they defined the term clean by using the term clean, which not, is not very helpful. Non-toxic, um, there are lots of things that are natural and that are very, very toxic. Um, and green, again, doesn't really tell us what that actually means. But they say, admittedly, the terms and definitions being used today to describe better for you formulas are more confusing than ever. So I appreciate that they kind of say that up front. They say clean beauty does not have a single definition and this claim is not regulated by the FDA. Wow, I really appreciate the fact that they took the time to actually say these things. This lack of regulation has created somewhat of a wild west scenario allowing brands, retailers, and media to decide independently how to describe the category. Unfortunately, it's beauty consumers who suffer by being bombarded with marketing messages, conflicting information, and sensationalized web content. Again, I think that that's very true. I agree with that. The problem is, is that despite admitting this, is Naturium playing off the same kind of marketing? We'll have to see. While we can't resolve all the unknowns and confusions in this area, we feel like it's important for us to share what clean beauty means to us at Naturium. Here is where we are today. We will continue to evolve as more research is discovered and as more innovation is created in our space. And then it looks like there are seven different factors that they consider um, makes their skincare products clean. The first is biocompatibility which I guess they're saying is just a formula that works. That's something I would think that you would want in all skincare, whether it's considered green, clean or not. The second is we are not a 100% natural brand, nor do we believe we ever will be. We believe in the power of nature and the advancement of science. Best safe formulas are realized when tapping into both worlds. Okay, I, I agree with that too. And I really appreciate that. Three, believe in transparency, ingredient list glossary, 
that's really good. I support that also. Okay, number four, by the end of 2020, we will be formulating within the European Union standards. The EU standards are strict and may consider, many consider them to be the gold standard for formula development within the beauty industry. I think that's fascinating. Um, I do agree that the you, that European countries have much different standards than we do. We uh, in the United States have extremely outdated standards. That's one of the biggest things. So I find that pretty intriguing. Number five, we strive for responsible and sustainable sourcing, which I also very much support. Number six, clean beauty standards meet the natural slash clean beauty standards of major retailers around the globe. Well, that's not very helpful because again, those standards aren't regulated and they're not consistent across retailers. And number seven, there is more to learn. There's more to do. We've built this brand through sincere intentions to create thoughtfully formulated compatible skin products and will continue to evolve. So all of these sentiments or most of these sentiments I appreciate and I support in theory. It's difficult to tell whether they're actually in implemented in practice, but with all those things in the background and considering those things, let's go ahead and look at each and every product, dive into the ingredients and see whether these claims are supported or not. And before we dive into individual ingredients, the way that I approach ingredients are, there are lots of them that I'm already familiar with, just having done a lot of reading, but there are tons of them that I have no idea what they are, or they have a chemical name instead of the generic name, and so it's hard to tell what they are. So when I do my research and go through each individual ingredient, um, and if I need to look it up, I use several different sources, and I try not to use just one of them. Obviously, one of the easiest ones and most accessible ones is Paul's Choices or Beautypedia's Ingredients Dictionary. They have a ton of available ingredients on there. The second one that I really, really love because it not only talks about ingredients, but it the website has basically scientific articles and studies more than just an ingredients dictionary. So it takes a lot longer to read through those things. And I guess it helps if you have a science background, although I don't think that's purely necessary, but the website is NCBI, which stands for the National Center for Biotechnology Information. So I love that resource because it gives you a lot more in-depth background and talks about studies that they've been doing. I do also use websites like EWG, although I don't 100% completely trust EWG, so I use EWG more for a comparison once I've looked up that ingredient um, on a site that I trust more. But those are just a few options if you also want to be able to look up ingredients and educate yourself about what they do and maybe what harms there are, benefits there are. All right, so product number one on the website is the Marine Hyaluronic Water Cream. Now this retails for $20 and inside you get 1.7 ounces or 50 grams. That's a fantastic price for a product that gives you that amount amount of product and it claims that it is created with marine based polysaccharides, hyaluronic acid and phytonutrients to give you long lasting hydration. Now this does come in jar packaging. The general rule is that you should avoid jar packaging because it exposes the product to a lot of air at one time and light and even if it even if the ingredients inside are stable and it's okay to expose them to light and air you're dipping your finger in there over and over again so you're introducing bacteria and germs into that world in the in the in the product but I think that hyaluronic acid in itself is not known to be an unstable ingredient, so it may be okay in jar packaging like this. Let's turn to the actual ingredients, starting with water, then we have dimethicone, which is more like an emollient or kind of a slip agent, propanediol, which helps to absorb other ingredients in the product, coconut fruit juice. Let's keep going and see if there's anything potentially problematic or stands out as a really, really fantastic ingredient because mostly the front-loaded ingredients seem to be more uh, texture-based ingredients like dimethicone type of slip agents. But then we get to this ingredient, Kappa Ficus Alvarezi extract. I don't know what that is. So in looking it up, it seems to be red algae extract, which is fantastic for the skin. It acts not only as kind of an emollient, but also is a great antioxidant for the skin. Altermonas ferment extract is another plant extract. It seems to have soothing properties for the skin. Melia azadiracta uh, leaf extract is also known as chinaberry extract, which is another plant extract and antioxidant. 
Now the flower part of that concerned me a little bit, but it seems like the flower extract also is good for the skin as an antioxidant, as opposed to being a fragrant extract, which is something we wanna avoid. Coralina officinalis extract, another plant extract. So a ton, this thing is just jam packed with plant extracts that an act as antioxidants on the skin. This is also a, it seems like in the category of the algae. Sodium hyaluronate to bring a bunch of moisture to the skin. You also have eggplant fruit extract, turmeric root extract, aloe. All these are really nice soothing ingredients for the skin. So overall this looks pretty jam-packed with good antioxidant plant extracts and hydrators. My only concern is the basil flower or leaf extract in there. That can also act as an antioxidant. It's a plant extract but the basil also has fragrant properties so that could be sensitizing. It is towards closer to the end of the ingredients list. Um, but overall I would say this seems to be a decent product. I would still prefer that it be in non-jar packaging to avoid um, the exposure to bacteria and you dipping your finger in there over and over. Let's move on to the next product, which is the Vitamin C Complex Serum. This seems to be the one that people are very curious about and ask a lot of questions about. This retails for $20 for a full fluid ounce. So again, extremely affordable, great price if this product is actually going to deliver in a positive way the vitamin C to your skin. It claims that there are highly stabilized l ascorbic acid encapsulations in there, which is good because vitamin C is notoriously unstable. There's also sodium ascorbyl phosphate and other fruit blends. You really want the ascorbic acid to get the potent form of vitamin C to the skin. And on that note, if you have not already seen my video where I give you the top recommendations for vitamin C products on the market, please go ahead and check that out. I give you a little overview of what vitamin C is and how it needs to be formulated in the product. And then I give you actual suggestions for products that are available on the market now that are gonna deliver that vitamin C for you. And remember that one of the key things is that vitamin C needs to be at a certain pH to be effective and absorbed by the skin. So if you have a ton of vitamin C in the product, but it's at the improper pH, you're kind of just throwing that out the window. So going to the ingredients here, we have water and glycerin. Now, in terms of the vitamin C, the first ingredient is this sodium ascorbyl phosphate. So it's not front loaded with the L-ascorbic acid or sometimes just listed as ascorbic acid. Now the sodium ascorbyl phosphate is still a stable form or more stable form of uh, vitamin C, which helps to brighten the skin tone and acts as an antioxidant. But it's really the next ingredient, the ascorbic acid, that is going to be the most potent, potent form of vitamin C delivered to the skin. Then the next ingredient is gold, which concerns me. Gold can be really sensitizing to the skin and in particular, if you place it around areas like the eyes. Obviously when it's put into skincare, it's uh, changed so that it can be dispersed throughout the product. But Beautypedia notes that the research that suggests that it may have some sort of soothing property on the skin that those studies were done very, very long time ago or on a very small group of people. So I think that at most this gold ingredient is um, neither good nor bad, or potentially could be irritating. Next is glutathione, which is a great antioxidant for the skin, followed by pineapple fruit extract, which can have some exfoliating properties for the skin. Same with papaya fruit extract, though to a lesser extent. Also have things like mango fruit extract, lots of fruit extracts actually, again, sodium hyaluronate to hydrate, you have aloe. So ideally the changes I would make to this product are to maybe front load the ascorbic acid just a little more, although it seems like there's a good amount of it in here. The product says that the vitamin C serum is at 22%. Now I don't know if it's 22% of the ascorbic acid, Acid, I'm assuming that's going to be a mixture of the sodium ascorbyl phosphate and the ascorbic acid. Vitamin C is ideally placed between 10 and 20% to be really effective, where if you have more sensitive skin and want less potential of irritation, you want to go lower into the 10% range and then higher up to the 20% range. If your skin is tolerant of vitamin C or you've been using it for a long time with good results and no adverse effects, then 22% is probably not going to be an issue for you, but just keep that in mind. But the most important important thing I think is when you look at the pH level for this product, they let you know what the pH is, which I think is fantastic. And I wish that all brands would do this for ingredients where the pH is 
key for the effectiveness of the ingredient. So that I support and appreciate about the brand. But the problem is, is that the pH for this product is placed at 5.3 to 6.4. And it says that this formulation is developed at the appropriate pH level to support skin health and ensure potency, but that's really not true. Vitamin C needs to be in the range of about three. It's usually like two and a half to three and a half. And you don't wanna go above three and a half, otherwise you lose the potency of the vitamin C. Now I have heard some sources suggest that you wanna go up and something around the five range for pH may help if you are super sensitive to the ingredient, but at that pH level, you're losing the efficacy of the vitamin C. So I have a feeling that unfortunately, I think despite including uh, what otherwise would be good vitamin C based and other antioxidant ingredients, the whole point of this product, I think is going to be lost or extremely dulled by the fact that this product is placed at a pH of not even just five to six, um, which I still think is too high, even if you have quote unquote sensitive skin, but 5.3 to 6.4, which is beyond even the range for some uh, resources that say maybe you should go to that level of five to six pH for sensitive skin. So uh, despite the price point and the otherwise good ingredients, I would not spend your $20 on this particular vitamin C serum. Uh, go to my video and see other very affordable skincare options that are vitamin C based if you want something that is effective and at the proper pH. Moving on to the next product, which is their Niacinamide Gel Cream 5%. For 1.7 ounces, it costs $20. Again, very reasonably priced. I have the same comments about it being in a jar as opposed to other packaging, although niacinamide is a very stable ingredient, so it doesn't necessarily need to be in something like an opaque airless pump uh, packaging, but that may not be true for the other ingredients that are in the product. So once again, I always prefer something to not be in jar packaging if possible. Moving on to the ingredients, water, dimethicone, and then the third ingredient is niacinamide. So they are giving you a healthy dose of this key ingredient, which is great. We already talked about the next ingredient, propanetiol, then followed by coconut fruit juice. Actually with the glycerin and that kappa ficus ingredient, which we saw in the very first product that also came in jar packaging, this seems to be kind of actually quite similar in terms of key ingredients to the first skincare product that we talked about. Obviously this one is front loaded with the niacinamide. So I don't see anything else on here that is uh, of concern or seems like it would cause any sort of damage to the skin. So this seems like a potentially great uh, skincare product at a really good price, in particular because that niacinamide doesn't necessarily need to be in non-jar packaging. So uh, a fair option if you wanted to consider this. Next product is the Mixed Greens Nutrient Rich Cleanser. For 7.1 fluid ounces, it's $16. Now it says it has mixed greens, vitamin C, and other nourishing superfoods to help cleanse the skin at the right pH. Just note that with any sort of wash off product, you're not gonna have enough time for those great ingredients to have a noticeable long-term effect on the skin. Sometimes with things like salicylic acid-based cleansers, if you keep it on the skin enough, it can have sort of a minimal effect. But otherwise with things like vitamin C or quote unquote superfruits, it's just better if you really wanna get the results out of those ingredients to make sure you have them in a stay on or leave on product like a moisturizer. So the second ingredient is that main cleansing agent for this product. And what's really nice about it is that it's a relatively mild or gentle cleansing agent. So it's not one of those super harsh drying cleansing agents followed by other things that help to nourish the skin, things like glycerin and also aloe are included in here. Now, the issue with this and many products like this are there are fragrant ingredients ingredients. So you see there that there's that bergamot fruit oil, the verbena flower extract. So you're getting several things that are basically fragrance in this product. Now, like I said, because it's wash off, it's not as much of a concern. If these ingredients were included in a moisturizer, I would definitely say do not purchase it. It's going to leave that irritating ingredient on your skin. But since this is a cleanser, the 
potential risk of that being really, really sensitizing over a long period is minimized. And next we have the retinoid face oil. For $25, you're getting one fluid ounce or 30 milliliters. Again, a very decent price if this is an effective retinoid product. Now, I don't know if my video that I've done talking about retinoids and the best products with retinol in them on the market, I don't know if that has been published yet. If it has, I will link that in the upper right-hand corner for you because that will just discuss not only what retinoids are, but also the best products and the best options you have on the market for products with retinoids in them. When we look at the ingredients for this product, we see that the made retinoid in here is the HPR, which is the hydroxypinacolone retinoate. Now, this is a fairly new kind of a retinoid ingredient. It is what is present in, for example, the Ordinary's Grand Active retinoid products. So because it's newer, it doesn't have as much research backing it, but it does have promising studies showing that that it can actually directly attach to your skin's retinoid receptors. So unlike other retinol kind of ingredients, it doesn't have to be converted in order to then be used by the skin. But that on the other hand, it may not cause the typical really irritating effects of a direct retinoid. So it is a really kind of exciting next generation retinoid, which is really nice to see in this product. You also have, even before that ingredient, you have squalane, which is also fantastic for the skin. It's very replenishing. It is nice and emollient. It acts as an antioxidant for the skin. And it looks like they have really based these ingredients around several oils, like the sunflower seed oil, avocado oil, metafoam seed oil, and that probably really helps to nourish the skin and also combat any sort of potential side effects of the retinoid. Although the whole point of the, or one of the main points of the HPR is that it's not supposed to have those really irritating effects the way a pure vitamins, uh, vitamin A would. The rice bran extract that's in here is supposed to really help soften the skin. And the rosemary extract, you, your ears may perk up because things in this family oftentimes are irritating fragrant plant extracts, but the rosemary extract is actually a good plant extract and helps to calm the skin. Unlike rosemary oil, if this had contained the rosemary oil, then that would have been a very fragrant component of the plant extract, but this is the leaf extract, so it has those beneficial soothing in, uh, properties without having the irritating, volatile, fragrant components. So overall, this looks like a really promising retinoid product, and I would definitely be interested in trying it. Next is their Virgin Marula Face Oil 100%. So for one fluid ounce, this costs $16. Again, fantastically priced and the only ingredient in here is the marula oil. Marula oil is a really nice emollient for the skin so it's nice and replenishing and it's also non-fragrant. Now you probably are familiar with Drunk Elephant's virgin marula oil which also contains just 100% marula oil, but for one ounce of that product, you pay $72. So this is absolutely a fantastic alternative at a much more affordable price for the exact same ingredient. The flip side of that is that The Ordinary also has their 100% cold pressed virgin marula oil. And for one ounce of that one, it's only $9.90. So that really is the most affordable option. But let's say you're placing an order on Amazon for these products anyway, or there's some sort of sale, then this is a great option. Next up is the multi-peptide eye cream, $16 for 0.5 fluid ounces. So you're getting half the amount that you're getting with most of the other Naturium products. Still $16, so still pretty affordable. And it looks like you get some great ingredients in here. We start out with glycerin and jojoba seed oil, which is very moisturizing and nurturing for the skin. You do get several different peptides in here. You get tripeptides and tetrapeptides, sodium hyaluronate, again, very, very moisturizing or nurturing to the skin. Pretty much everything that I'm seeing here is good. I don't see anything that stands out to me as fragrant or irritating to the skin. Once again, prefer non-jar packaging, but we've already talked about that. Next product is the Quadruple Hyaluronic Acid Serum 5%. For a full fluid ounce, it is $16. Once again, fantastically priced. We start out in the ingredients with water, glycerin, propanediol, hyaluronic acid. So right out the gate, you are getting all of those hydrators. You also have hydrolyzed hyaluronic acid. This ingredient, sphingolipids, 
I've, I don't think I've ever seen this before, but in researching, this is also a very replenishing skincare ingredient. It's a long chained lipid or fat. Honey, which can also act as like a humectant and an antibacterial also. Then we have Magnolol, which looks like it is an antioxidant and can have anti-inflammatory effects and antimicrobial effects on the skin. So this seems overall like a good and intriguing option too. Next up is another vitamin C product that we have. Hopefully we'll get some better results with this one. This is the Vitamin C Super Serum Plus. So again, one fluid ounce, this time at $25, still super affordable. Interestingly, this starts out with water and niacinamide, propanediol, glycerin, all of these are great. Also, you get that ascorbic acid. So interestingly, this doesn't have a percentage on it. So we don't know how much of the vitamin C you are getting, even though we know that you're getting the ascorbic acid. We've already talked about the gold and what potential downsides there are to that. Then we have retinol palmitate, sodium hyaluronate, salicylic acid, aloe leaf juice, all of these are great. And honestly, looking at the rest of the ingredients, this seems like a fantastic choice. The problem is, again, like I said, is we don't actually know how much vitamin C there is. And oh, I almost forgot, let's look at the pH level. Oh no, again, we have 5.5 to 6.5, even higher than with the other vitamin C product. So again, you're not going to get the efficacy of the vitamin C delivered here because it's not at the correct pH. In addition, I can't say what the percentage of the, the vitamin C is. So if it's below 10%, then that also may make this product um, you know, not, not worth using. The, on top of that, the retinal palmitate is several conversions away from actually being um, the vitamin C that is going to, or I'm sorry, not the vitamin C, the vitamin A that is the pure form of vitamin A that will be received by your skin. So I was really excited at first about this, but now looking at the pH level, the fact that we don't know how much of the vitamin C is in the product and the fact that the retinoid or the retinol that is used in here is not even close to to the potent form of vitamin A makes me really kind of ho-hum about this option. And I mean, maybe if you had incredibly sensitive skin that reacts to just almost every sort of skincare ingredient out there, but you wanted to try to get the benefits of some sort of vitamin C and retinoid, I mean, maybe, but even then it's not the right pH. So yeah, I can't, I can't recommend this product. I mean, it has other good ingredients in there. So if you didn't care about the vitamin C and you didn't really care about the retinoids, then there are other great ingredients in here other than maybe the gold. Um, <clears throat> but you know, if you're buying this product, you're probably buying it because it says vitamin C and it says that it has other good ingredients in it. Okay, another retinoid product. This is the Retinol Complex Cream. For $20, it's 1.7 fluid ounces, fantastic price. Let's cross our fingers and hope that the retinol in here is actually appropriate. So we start out nice and hydrating with water, glycerin, shea butter, dimethicone for more of the texture. Looks like the seventh ingredient is retinol. So retinol is a more potent form of the retinoid. It is still a couple conversions away from being that source of pure kind of direct vitamin A, but there is good research showing that uh, with longer term use, it can have similar uh, achievements of the anti-aging benefits that the pure vitamin A would. We've got bakuchiol. We also have the retinol palmitate on top of the retinol. So they're combining those two. Linoleic acid, sodium hyaluronate. We have squalane too, palmitic acid. So overall, I am pretty impressed with the ingredients included in this product. Retinol needs to be at a pH around five or six in order to function best. So let's see what pH level this is at. Oh, it's at five to 5.75. That is perfect. So this is appropriately placed in terms of pH levels and has those good skincare ingredients. So at $20, this is definitely a retinol product that I would support and suggest. Next up is the Plant Squalane Face Oil, 100%, $16 at one fluid ounce, 
very well priced. You have the sole ingredient of this being squalane. Squalane is a super emollient kind of hydrating ingredient. It is also an antioxidant. So this is a fantastic option if you're looking for that ingredient. Now there are some more affordable options. We know that The Ordinary has several uh, options that have squalane in them, although I don't think that they have one with just pure squalane. Though the Inky List does have the squalane oil with 100% squalane. That retails for $11.99 for a full fluid ounce. So it is cheaper than this one from Naturium, but it's not that much less expensive. And once again, if you're already placing an order or if it's on, if it's on sale, then definitely a good option. Next up is the Vitamin C Face Oil. So we've got another Vitamin C product. Let's see if this one is at the proper pH or is effective. You get one fluid ounce for $25. Interesting, it says this is formulated with THD ascorbate, which is a highly stable oil soluble form of vitamin C. So looking at the ingredients, again, sunflower oil, squalane, metafoam seed oil, avocado oil, rice bran extract. Where is the vitamin C? Rosemary leaf extract. Oh, I missed it. It's the fifth ingredient. That is the tetrahexyl decal ascorbate, i.e. the THD ascorbate. And it is true that this is a stable form of vitamin C. The other advantage of this form of vitamin C is that its natural pH is more akin to the natural pH of your skin, which is around five and a half, six and a half, which is the pH that we saw in the other vitamin C products, but in those instances, that pH wasn't appropriate. What's curious is that they don't list what the pH is of this particular vitamin C product. I don't know why they wouldn't list it for this and uh, list, but they list it for the other ones. So I guess I can't say for sure whether even this vitamin C product is at the appropriate pH level. If it is at the same level as the other vitamin C products we've already looked at, then for this particular form of vitamin C, that would be appropriate, but they don't list it on the website. Next up, we have another retinol product. This is the Retinol Complex Serum. Retails for $20 for a fluid ounce. This says that it has 2.5% of the microencapsulated retinols and bacuchiol. This time around, they combine retinol, which is the fourth ingredient, with the retinol palmitate. So I'm glad that they front loaded it with the retinol first. Sodium hyaluronate, glycerin. I don't see anything negative about this product. And compared to the other products so far, it has a relatively short ingredients list. So this seems pretty straightforward. The pH level is appropriate at five and a half to six. So this one seems like a great option. And the very last product that is currently available in the line as of filming of this video is the niacinamide serum 12% plus zinc 2% for one fluid ounce, this is $16. The very second ingredient is the niacinamide, which is fantastic. Niacinamide is a vitamin and antioxidant. It helps to soothe the skin and can also help with blemishes. Overall, a really nice anti-aging ingredient. And you also have included the zinc PCA. Zinc is also an antioxidant and skin soothing ingredient. And the rest of this ingredient deck looks great too. Also relatively simple in terms of the number of ingredients included in this product. Now you may be thinking of The Ordinary's product, which also has niacinamide 10% and zinc 1%. So we can see that the percentages of both of those main ingredients are lower in The Ordinary's version. Now for 1% with The Ordinary, you only pay $5.90, which is about a third of the price of the one from Naturium. But either way, these both seem like a great option if you're looking for that niacinamide and zinc in one product. All right, there is the a full brand every product available review for an aturium. I hope that's the way you pronounce it. Interesting brand. I really like what they stand for. I do feel like several of those offerings that they have fall short of being ideally formulated, which is really disappointing, especially with the issues with the pH levels on their vitamin C products, but definitely a good number of products in the line that are very promising and look very good when it comes to the formulation. And overall, I am very happy to see that these are really, really well priced. Oh, something that I didn't mention that of course is a big bonus is that other than the ones that in there in the jars, 
These are all formulated in opaque bottles. They have dropper tubes, so they're not completely airtight, save for the cleanser, which we don't really care about that. But they do come in opaque packaging with dropper bottles, which is nice to see. So please let me know what you think in the comment section below. And of course, any other brands you want me to review. I hope this was helpful to you and you enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. As always, thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch, and I'll see you in the next video.